What's going on? This is Seamus with Entrepreneur Mobility. I want to welcome everybody back. I want to say thank you to everybody out there that has been subscribing to the channel, leaving comments, sending me emails, asking me questions, following me on all my other social media platforms. It is truly appreciated. You're probably going to hear me say that in every video because I truly appreciate you taking the time out to watch my video. And please share the video, like the video, tell your friends about it, tell them to follow the channel because what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed off of the energy that I get from this channel. I need to know what you guys are looking for, what you need help in. So once again, I say thank you and welcome to Entrepreneur Mobility. So today I want to talk about a subject that I know is going to be very touchy. I know I'm going to get people sending me messages agreeing, disagreeing, thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribing, unsubscribing. Don't like what I say, love what I say. But that's my purpose here is to bring you uh, my view as an entrepreneur, my journey and share my experiences with you guys. All of the ones that are starting off, whether you're just trying to be an entrepreneur and starting a business or if you're trying to get into real estate or if you're trying to get into branding and marketing, I have information I think is really valuable. But I'm going to explain this the best I can from my view. As an investor, I see it from different angles. I see it from the investor side where you're purchasing a property and you're fixing and flipping it. I see it from a wholesaler side. I see it from a buy and hold side. I see it from the financial side. So my views may be a little bit different than yours if you're only looking at it from one angle. If you're only a wholesaler or if you're only a fix and flipper or if you're only a buy and hold or you're a financial person, you may disagree with some of the stuff that I'm going to say today. But this is what I want to bring to you guys and, I, and, and there's a lot of new people getting into the business and I just want to share information. I want to share information, my experience I got. I know a lot of investors, we talk about a lot of different things so I'm just going to give it to you exactly how they talk to me about it. And the subject of this video is wholesaling ethics. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to explain the ethics that I think a wholesaler should have. And this is not only coming from what or the way that I think. This is coming from different investors and wholesalers that is frustrated with the way people look at you when you mention or say you're a wholesaler. So I'm going to kind of touch on a couple of different subjects. So let's just dive right in. So I want to kind of explain my view of how a wholesaler should actually even advertise a property. Now, my take on this is I hear this from a lot of different investors. If you don't have the property under contract, you shouldn't be advertising it on Facebook, on Craigslist, or any of those platforms. Now, I'm not saying that if you work with a wholesaler and you may have a potential buyer, that you may not, you know, pick up the phone, call that buyer, and ask him, hey, I got a property that you may potentially be interested in. Send them the information, but communicate with the wholesaler that has it under contract that you're doing this. I see people, wholesalers, taking other wholesalers' properties and listing them on Craigslist and Facebook and they didn't even have a discussion. They never even talked about no type of referral fee or nothing. And on top of that, they added twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to the price. You bid yourself out of that deal. And that's just bad ethics. To me, that's not something that I would ever do. It's a lot of times that wholesalers call me and say, I got this property. Do you have a buyer? And I may call a couple of buyers and say, listen, uh, a friend of mine has a property he's trying to get rid of. Me and him work something out as a referral fee or a commission, and then I turn the property over to them, and that deal goes through. That's just good ethics. So that's my take. You shouldn't put a property uh, on any social media platform or Craigslist or any of those platforms that you don't have equitable interest in. That's my view on it. Then I want to talk about understanding comps. How to correctly pull comps. I get lists, I get emails from people that, uh, from wholesalers that has a property and they'll give me a, an analysis on the property and say, hey, you know, we want 100,000 for the property, the ARV is 40,000, I mean, the ARV is 250,000, the rehab budget is 30,000, 40,000, 
I do my due diligence on a property, I find out that the comps that they compared it to are nowhere near the property. Now, I do understand, and you should understand also, that you have to do apples to apples. If none of those properties in that half mile or mile radius is rehab, then you can go a little farther out and try to compare a property that has been recently rehabbed. So for wholesalers, learn how to pull comps. If you don't know how to pull comps, if you know a realtor, try to communicate with them or get somebody on your team that knows how to pull comps. It will make your job much easier and you will build a buyer's list of people that have confidence in you when you send them properties. Then let's just hop into rehab budgets. I get properties in my email every day. When I look at the rehab budget, the budgets, they are so far off. Like I got some a property yesterday that the wholesaler told me the rehab budget was 30000 I went to look at the property. It was about an $80,000 rehab. I calculate things different. So, and plus that I, since I'm on the side of an investor, I understand how to correctly uh, calculate a rehab budget because that's something that I'm going to have to pay for. I'm going to either have to go to a hard money lender where they want you to have a line by line scope of work of what needs to be done. So if you're wholesaling, on top of learning how to pull comps, make sure you know how to correctly calculate a rehab budget. Go to Lowe's, go to Home Depot, get prices. There's a lot of apps out there that can help you calculate the rehab budget on the property. So if you want to make, if you want to scale your business and you want to take it to, if you're if you're only doing, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 a year, you want to take it to six figures, or if you're six figures, you want to take it to seven figures, you gotta learn how to pull comps and you gotta learn how to calculate the rehab budget correctly for your investor. When I wholesale a deal and I find a buyer, an investor, right? The first thing I do is I calculate the rehab budget and try to be as accurate as I can be since I'm on the investor side and I'm pretty good at calculating the budget and the numbers. If you tell me the square foot in a year it was built, I can give you a ballpark figure of how much that property is going to need to get rehab to bring it up to market value. Right, so I correctly pull the comps, I correctly calculate the budget, okay? I give them their due diligence period. You have to give a buyer their due diligence period. I hear I, emails once again, they send me properties, no due diligence. No due diligence, no answer your email, no answer your phone call. You're not going to tell me that you're selling me a property for a quarter million dollars and I can't do my due diligence on it. They want you to actually run title and everything and do your due diligence before you put on the contract. If that was the case, I would be running titles on 10 different houses a day. I, if I agree to a price, if you say, hey, I want 150,000 for this price and that includes my assignment fee. I'm gonna agree to the price, okay? First, I'm gonna run my numbers. So the first thing I do is when I get a property is I run comps and I run an estimate on the rehab budget. If those two numbers work, I don't care how much you make. Last thing I wanna talk about is for wholesalers, you have to understand the concept of customer retention. Now, what do I mean by customer retention? Now, you do have to do your best for your seller as well as your investor. But keep in mind, that once you sell that property, you're never, chances are you're never gonna see that seller again. You helped them out of the situation, the house is sold, they're done. But your investor, the person, your customer, you're gonna have to speak to them time in and time out over and over again. So when I say customer retention, make sure that you focus on taking care of the investor. The person that picks your phone call up, you send them a deal, they like the deal, you make your money, and they do this repeatedly with you. So I, of course, look out for the person selling the home. I make sure they get what they want and everything is good with them. But I also look out for the investor. Some wholesalers, you don't really care if the investor makes money or loses money. For me, if you sell me a property and a bunch of problems pop up, 
that you didn't make me aware of and I missed during my due diligence period. Now, during my due diligence period, I try my best to analyze everything, but there's stuff that slips through the cracks. But if it's something that I find out later that you was aware of happened or something and you didn't tell me, I'm never going to do another transaction with you. And if you're good at what you do, you only need one or two cash buyers and they'll buy everything that you have. You don't need a list of 5,000 buyers. You don't even need a list of 100 buyers. You can find a handful of buyers that have access to money. If your numbers are right, if you're following the 70% rule, what do I mean about the 70% rule? Let's say you have a property that's 300,000. You take 30% off of that price, which is 210,000. Then you subtract your rehab budget. Let's say the rehab budget is 60,000. Your Mayo, the maximum you can offer that person is 150,000. And even with that, I bid a little bit lower. I may start at 130, 135, knowing that 150 is the cap. I don't wanna go past there. So if you know your numbers, you only need a couple of cash buyers, a handful of cash buyers that have access to money and they will buy everything that you have. You don't need a thousand. I hear wholesalers saying on oh, my, my buyers list is 5,000. Really? And you can't sell the properties that you have? That means something's wrong. If you're trying to scale that business and you understand the system of comps and rehabs and the 30% rule and know the criteria that your buyer is looking for, Every property that you get under contract, you will be able to sell. Those were just a couple of things that I wanted to talk to everybody about. If you're a new wholesaler, these are just some things that I would advise you take into consideration. And if you're trying to scale your business, if you're trying to scale your business, you have to get it to a point where you have a system. And, and once you have that system and it's formatted correctly, all the properties that you got should come in and write out your door. You shouldn't have no issue with sitting on properties and stuff like that. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. Everybody, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the post notification button. Send me a message, like, dislike, comment, hate, love, whatever it is. I appreciate all the engagement and I'm going to keep bringing you contact. And once again, welcome to Entrepreneur Mobility. Stay blessed.